Hello, Paul Lewis here. Today we're going to talk about the addition of sine waves, but before we do, I'd like to talk just a little bit about what sine waves are and why they're so important to things such as audio. Sine waves occur naturally in many different things, such as, for example, the vibration of a tuning fork, or the vibration of a guitar string, or even in electricity where we generate sine waves for transmission of power over long distances or for the generation of sound. My voice is made up of many many different frequencies of sine wave all mixed together and what I'm going to show you today is how we can use a spreadsheet for, to very quickly add together as many sine waves as we want to find out what a complex waveform would look like with many different frequencies of sine wave. To do that I'm going to use the three major notes for an A chord. That's going to be A fundamental, that's going to be 440 hertz. I'm going to use a function generator at 440 hertz. I'm going to take the major third, which is C sharp, and I'm going to take the fifth, which is E. Now together, those three notes there, they form an A chord, but also they're the harmonies to A, the major harmonies. So we have A, C sharp, E. And I'm going to show you what they look like on when they're mixed together. I'm going to show you how to use Excel to calculate it very quickly. In fact, to calculate this using a calculator in the traditional method, you'd have to be either very bored or very drunk. Cheers. Oh yeah, and before we start, I'd like to thank my good friend, Paul OCD Mulder, for all the camera work, help and support he's given me over the last few months. Cheers. We're going to start on paper, and we're going to start with the frequencies of the three notes that I showed you. So roughly, they are A is equal to 440 hertz, C sharp is equal to 554 Hertz and E is equal to 659 Hertz. We're going to call A the fundamental and all of our measurements will be based from the fundamental so in engineering terms that's what we call our datum point C sharp will be waveform 1 and E will be waveform 2. All of the calculations will be based around this equation. V instantaneous is equal to V max times the sine of omega t plus or minus the phase. But for our purposes today, we're not going to worry about the phase. We're just going to be dealing with this part of the equation here. Omega is equal to 2 pi f. F is the frequency and omega is 2 pi radians. So basically it takes 2 pi radians for a circle to travel 360 degrees and a full cycle of a sine wave is 360 degrees. Because A is the fundamental it has a frequency of 440 hertz. What we are going to do is we're going to find out the periodic time of A. We take 1 and we divide 440 into 1 and that gives us the periodic time of A. And the periodic time of A is 0 0.00 2 and so on. So just pretty much recurs there. We are going to sample our sine wave 
at 30 degree intervals. 30 degrees goes into 360 12 times. So we're going to take 12 samples of the full sine wave. Therefore, each sample will be taken at 0 0.00272 divided by 12. This means we're going to take a sample every 0 0.000189 seconds. The fundamental is relatively easy, but for waveform 1, we need to look at the frequency, 554 Hz, and we need to look at 2 pi. We're going to multiply 2 pi, which is roughly 6.283 times 554, and this will give us omega 1. That's this part of the equation here. And when we round that up, that comes to 3, 4, 8, 0, or 3, 4, 8, 1. It doesn't really matter too much. We do exactly the same for the E waveform, omega 2. 6.283 times 659 is equal to omega 2. And it's equal to 4140. Both of these numbers here are now constants and we can use them in our spreadsheet when we calculate the, the waveform. This is a constant for C sharp and this is a constant for E and in terms of the constant in the equation itself it's omega here, 2 pi f. We're going to plot the waveform at 30 degree intervals. At 30 degrees the amplitude of A, C sharp and E will add to a certain figure and we will mark that figure on the grid and then at 60 degrees we'll get another figure which we'll mark on the grid 90 degrees so on and so forth and we're going to do this for three full cycles of the sine wave and then we're going to measure it up or we're going to compare it with a simulation to see how accurate we've been with our mathematics and our spreadsheet. So here we are in Excel so that it just doesn't take too long. What you need to do is set up seven columns. Fundamental, Waveform 1 Radians, Waveform 2 Radians, Waveform 1 Amplitude, Waveform 2 Amplitude, Time and Result. I've got these columns set up here, but I'm going to go through the process that you're going to need to do over and over and over again um, in terms of setting this up. So I'm going to start with the time, how we get the time. I'm going to set up another column over here, we're going to call it time. And I'm going to put the first time value in, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.000189, like so. In the next column, which I highlight going down, I press equals and then I highlight the column above it, M5, and then I'm going to press plus 0.000189, enter, copy this result, control C to copy, choose the edge and drag it all the way down to the bottom like that. And what that technique does is it adds 0 0.000189 to each subsequent line all the way down to the bottom. So if for example you were doing 10 or 12 cycles you could copy it all the way down without having to enter it manually, it's very easy. That takes into account the, um, the time. Similar technique, fundamental here if you go into your calculator and type sine 30 you get 0.5, sine 60.866 so on and so forth I'm gonna, I could copy the first 12 terms there here, paste them in 
and then it's just a case of highlighting next one down paste highlight next one down paste and that's how you do that one very simple the radians column for the first waveform if you remember back when we calculated the constant for this column it was 3480 so to demonstrate this in a different column in the FX box we press equals 3480 multiply that's a little star and highlight the time box and press enter control C to copy grab the corner and drag it all the way down to the bottom of your graph and that will do the same calculation for time with each of the constants going all the way down and we can do exactly the same for the second waveform or the third waveform you remember that constant was for put the equal sign first beg your pardon 4140 and multiply and once again highlight the time box press enter control C to copy and drag all the way down to the bottom like so and you can see both columns perfectly set up there next thing we do is we need to take the sine of the angle sine of the angle from the radians that will give us the amplitude for each waveform so I'm going to use this box here we press the box equals sine bracket opening bracket choose we're going to choose the first waveform the first value of the first waveform and then we're going to close the bracket like so press enter copy control C grab the edge drag it all the way down to the bottom and it's effectively the very same operation for the next one so if I take the next one along equals sign opening bracket select the first value closing bracket enter control C drag all the way down to the bottom and there we have it finally we need to add together the three waveforms so I will do that now and we're going to use the fundamental here so select a box anywhere I'm using column U type equals highlight fundamental plus from your keyboard Q, column Q, which we just calculated, plus column R, enter, control C to copy, and drag all the way down to the bottom, and that gives you all of your results. And those are all the results required to plot the waveform for a sine wave at 30 degree intervals when we're using three sine waves with an amplitude of one. Now let's look at it on a graph. So we'll take our data from here. Time and result. We will highlight all of that data. Insert. Line. And there is the replication of the graph that's what it should look like when the three sine waves are added together and we can check that we, or we will check that um, I've set up uh, the same circuit in multisim which is here and you can see how closely they correspond to each other this is using three sine wave voltage sources or function generators in series you see each of them have an amplitude of one volt we start with 440 hertz which is a fundamental we add 554 and we add 659 and we get this waveform which corresponds to the first three cycles and as I mentioned earlier you could do as many cycles as you wanted to and as many waveforms as you wanted to if you really wanted to this can be an extremely tedious exercise if you're just using a calculator 
it's really well worth using or learning to use the spreadsheet for many 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 electronics applications once you've mastered the equations and once you know what you're doing with them it can save you an awful lot of time hope that helped you uh, bye bye